this book introduces a brand new idea, mm. the idea of, a, of organizations having a chief culture officer. Why is it that you think organizations and organization leadership need to even be thinking about something to do with the word culture? Right. Right. Why? I think because the world of the corporation is largely shaped by the assumptions of economics and engineering and, and, and operations management and many things that don't actually give us a good way of talking about culture. So culture has been the kind of unwanted guest at the, at the table. And, um, and indeed you can go to a business school and never get any instruction in culture at all, despite the fact that it ends up being for certain critical decisions, for certain corporations at certain moments, culture is the factor that, that makes the difference. And not knowing it means you make, in the case of uh, Levi Strauss, the jeans maker, you make a mistake in the order of losing a billion dollars of sales. When you say the word culture, right. how do you define it? I mean the ideas in people's heads, the ideas with which we understand the world and we construct appropriate responses in that world. It's rules and it's meanings that exist in our head to enable us to s understand what we see and to negotiate that world with our behavior. You're right. talking about the larger zeitgeist in which we live, totally. the larger culture. Totally. Would that that's be? the perfect word. That's and, and in fact, we get our understanding of this notion of culture from the Germans who had this magnificently interesting way of, of working with culture. The trouble is, without a systematic um, notion of culture, it ends up being blind men and an elephant. So you get a bit of it here, and you get a bit of it there. But at no point do you sort of, I think, grasp that in fact this, there's one single body of meanings and rules here called culture, and that you're dealing with it in this very partial, kind of episodic, um, almost random kind of way when, when you use the present methodologies of finding out. Corporation does have access to cultural understanding, but often it comes from gurus. Uh, who, when you ask them, well, how did you come up with that phone design or um, this product idea? Uh, they'll say, well, I just felt it. And, you know, this is characteristic of creative people. They intuit things. When you ask them to account for their decision, they can't really tell you. And that's a problem for a corporation. I mean, certainly it wants creative people creating, working at the top of their game, but it wants, uh, you know, what happens to Apple without Steve Jobs? You know, what? Well, it's over. Unless they have somehow captured some part of his genius, unless, it, unless it's somehow resident in the soul of the corporation, the whole thing is Steve-centric. And the moment he leaves, um, Apple is, what you know, they'll run on for a couple of iterations, but really it's over, because only Steve can divine the future. Where we are now is the understanding is that change is continual so that you have to uh, constantly be in a state of, of uproar, if you want. You have to be constantly responding to the uproar of the world out there. And so much of that uproar comes from culture, um, from shifting ideas. Even the idea is still a bit messy. Sure. And that's what makes this book so interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, no, really, I, I would say that. The fundamental notion that there are big underlying things changing that we need to be aware of. And we need to understand how to think about these things and interpret them. And we need to learn how to ask questions mm. better, all of which you deal with in here. Even if this is the start of a discussion, it's already an amazing contribution. Thank you, Grant, thank, thank you very, thank you so very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.